Toy Tractor Times is at the 2017 National Farm Toy Show and we're here with Chris Steve, a well-known model farm builder and displayer. Chris, congratulations on taking first place in the small-scale division here at the National Show. Uh, another win. You've um, brought a lot of trophies home over the years uh, for your great work. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Yeah, this was a good one. This was one. This of any of my displays was closest to my heart. As a lot of you know, I know a lot more about firefighting than I do farming, and I wanted to show how it actually looks in a rural setting when we have a bad situation. Well, we're taking going to take a look at that, and uh, you know, congratulations on the 40th anniversary uh, Toy Farmer National Farm Toy Show trophy with a gold D D21 Alice Chalmers and. It's yeah, a it very nice piece to have um, to take home. For it's your nice to work. win another year with an Agco product back on top. All right, that's a good deal. <laughs> well, let's take a look at that display. Okay. So, Chris, we've got a big fire going on here on the farm, and that's just a really great way to create a fire. I mean, that black smoke is something you never want to see in the countryside. So, tell us a little bit about the farm and what kind of inspired you to put this together. Well, the farm parts of this farm are actually really on the real early farms that I talk about in my Model Farm Mondays and such, so I kind of wanted to give a shout out to JW for all the help that he's done for all the years. And then the fire side of it, like I said, was a shout out towards all the brothers that I've worked with and the fire instructors down at Oklahoma State University. And, um, there's a lot, I've made a, a lot of great friends that are on volunteer departments all around the country here. There's a lot of crossover in this world in the rural between farmers and firefighters because I think we both care about our communities. Um, the one thing is, like I said, there's something going on in the shed. People keep asking me what's burning. The answer is, I don't know. My entry team hasn't made it in the door yet. So uh, the entry team is, uh, is coming the, right the there. Is the four-man crew with the two hose lines coming off the primary attack engine. Um, so we've got uh, the guys going in the door there to get start, it out. Yeah, start to extinguish the fire. There's a second crew working on the west end of the building to get another door open so that more of the smoke will vent the opposite way that the fire is going to, uh, like I said, will be ultimately extinguished. And so that's your primary attack yep, engine Yeah, that's what right we there. call the primary attack engine. It's got the large yellow supply line running to it. Um, out from, some people call it a portable pond, we call it a portable tank. What it is is a big portable aluminum with a, a canvas inside of it, a uh, bathtub, that uh, can fold down. You can see them on top of some of the other tankers that are headed down the road. Um, and this is what they look like when they're folded out. They hold anywhere from a thousand gallons to I've seen them as big as five thousand gallons. And what you do is that as a tanker comes up, they open a dump valve on the back. It unloads all it, like this truck here will unload in less than a minute. It makes it so that this tanker can head down the road. He'll head out. The next one will just roll up real quick, make a turn, back in and he'll open his dump valve and keep going and that way the tanker water is always on the road to keep going to wherever it has to go to to a pond or a hydrant closer to where town is to keep bringing water out to fight the rural fire so now we've got the pump yeah the pump operator if you actually look i don't some of you guys know him as lockwood angus i was actually as i tease a lot of the guys in the toy world i actually had lockwood put on the back of his turnout gear just to be fun to sean um, then you got, as you come along, you see all the pickups parked into the ditch. I don't know if any of you have been on rural fires or there. You know, most of the guys show up in their pickup. You just park them wherever so they're out of the way of the trucks. So you grab your gear and you go to work. And now did someone show up in their mass Yeah, that's it. They were, the guy was getting ready. One of the neighbors was getting ready to go out and do some disking, and his pager went off. And whatever you're in, you just respond in. I've seen guys show up in everything from, you know, four-wheelers and bobcats and areas to in the Shipsawana area in Indiana, the Amish guys. I've actually seen buggies and stuff respond to the station. The Amish guys can't drive the trucks, but they're committed to their community, so they wait for a, a, a English person to show up and hop in the cab and take them to the scene. And uh, I just want to look back here at the Massey. It's also hooked up to a Massey Ferguson disc. Yeah. And uh, Chris Steve kind of has a, a rule about national farm displays. Place if you want to do well, you better have at least one Massey, Massey on there. there. This one's actually got three of them. The, uh, the tractor was done by me, uh, Carrie G, or the dogs, did me that gorgeous Massey disc. She all works the way she's supposed oh, to. It's got the true inside. Massey oh, frame. That's what that is. Um, <laughs> I want to, while we're ground, like I so said, we'll cover the fire, but while we're up here in front, I wanted to point out the little divco that the farm uses as a farm sign, and wanted to give a shout out to uh, Cheryl at the Oklahoma Centennial Farm Association. I called her up this week and said I had probably the weirdest question of the month for her. Um, I wanted to actually have her do me a uh, Oklahoma Centennial sign with the actual Red Dirt Dairy logo on it. And 
she uh, after showing her my one of the other YouTube videos Jason had done of me, she thought it was too cool and talked to her boss and they had to do that for me and requested that I at least give them some pictures for their Facebook page of it. Very nice. Um, as we come around on the fire side of it, there's a, one of the neighbor's departments is getting just under the smoke you can see is getting ready to set up their little ladder truck. And what we've done is we've got a uh, the secondary or front mount pumper has laid out more of the yellow hose that hasn't been charged yet is headed to the farm pond to set up what we would call as a secondary water source. Um, they went through a uh, just a normal cattle guard which you see guys have seen on my display they're an opening the gate the cows won't go across. This one actually opens into the bullpen. Spooked the one bull. Um, the other one, the old bull that Zach Barter did for me is just sitting there chilling. He doesn't carry it. As long as somebody's feeding him and watering him, he's happy to go. <laughs> um, the fire like sits side of it, I mean we got the what we call a staging area up on the hill in front of the big machine shop with the ambulance and the rescue with the extra guys gears. There is, people have been asking why the farm equipment hasn't been moved out. The uh, one farmer is that, that was doing that is actually headed up the hill on the stretcher. Um, something that commonly happens is the guys whose farm it is, because he's nervous about losing his place, can get so stressed out that we've known guys to have heart attacks. So, yeah commonly want to try to keep guys calm and get to the fire as quick as you can and we normally would like I said this would be early in the fire and we will start assigning a couple guys to try to get the get his tractors and stuff away from the fire so he doesn't have more damage than what needs to be. So what's your uh, what was your favorite fire truck to, I know up at the Lafayette Toy Show in Indianapolis uh, you had a lot of fire trucks on display and what's your favorite one of all these? That's here is this actual the little engine that's on that's on primary attack the, I've lettered it up, or had it lettered up as Red as Redlands, Oklahoma, the name of my town, the, the major town display I'm getting ready to work on and such. But it is actually based after the uh, engine that is on our site or was on our SIO Fire Department. We retired it a couple years ago, and I have fond memories of that truck being a rookie and riding it backwards and such, and, uh, and then getting when I finally got to drive and such. So that's that's the one that, like I said, I as I've told people, I split, I, I, I uh, shared a lot of blood and sweat on that truck, the real one. So that's that's to my heart. Um, Let's, uh, why don't we take a look at the fire on the other side here and okay. talk yeah. about that detail. So here we are on the fire side and this black smoke looks really intense and we can see it's coming right out of the building. It looks very realistic. Chris, how did you create this um, um, smoke effect? Yeah, that's actually a quilting bat that I found some in black and it has a whole bunch of coat hangers actually and you can see when you come here I can back a little off you can see it's just a regular coat hanger there's about seven of them strung in there and bent in different ways and um, then I left about a foot and a half of it so that I could stab it down into the foam um, and then I just used that uh, uh, the number set like 77 spray adhesive to just keep packing it on very nice down so now we come down to the fire I mean that really looks like it's cooking in there and uh, it's you know, a neat effect. Yeah, it was actually really simple. I'll open, work on opening this door so you can see it. I hope the video will be able to get it, but what it is is an LED light bulb that I found. Um, I'll just roll around this way. It's actually to uh, make it look like it's a candle light up in the air on like a chandelier. And it being LED, it'll, it's able to stay cool so it doesn't hurt the display and hurt the plastic. The one funny thing about it is it's so bright, I actually had to um, spray paint the inside of the barn black four times or the whole when I originally tested it the whole barn uh, shine well, that's just a really cool effect I mean even with the door open there you know it just looks like a fire crackling away in there so in addition to the fire uh, which is really cool and all these fire trucks are uh, staged throughout the, the farm display this is actually an Oklahoma dairy farm, uh, and Chris, you're always known for having some really cool tractors and well thought out customs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the farming operation and everything that normally would be going on despite the fire. Fire, yeah, it's a it's an 80 cow. Um, it's Oklahoma dairy. There, that is the dairy is kind of the secondary business. The uh, primary job, the farm is primarily um, does alfalfa and corn, bean, uh, oats, some canola and also cotton. Um, I did show, wanted to show off a little chunk of the top shelf replica cotton field for the first time. They've been asking me to put some on my display to show that it's out there. People keep asking for it and they haven't actually seen it because nobody I don't think has finished a display with it. 
real nice product. Uh, goes in as simple as the corn does. Um, actually, for the the uh, debris from the defoliage, I just took some fall leaves and crushed them through a colander and put them down. I want to thank uh, Brad McPherson. I called him up. I've seen a lot of cotton in the field, never had anything to do with it. I had to call him while he was harvesting cotton to ask him what the field would look like to make it more realistic. Looks good. Um, as for it, we'll start down here with the machine sheds. We'll open them up and show them off. Um, this one is a full working wood shop. Uh, one of my good friends, the place where actually me and Don got married, uh, Barry Logan is a professional uh, woodworker, makes custom cabinetry and stuff. So this little shop was kind of a O to Barry. Um, it's got the staining room and a bathroom in it for the, and such. And it's got the full dust collection that comes here to the outside for the sawdust. Um, as Jason sweeps around, kind of a neat truck you pass by is a uh, large square bale collector that the farm has. Um, the farm, like I said, also use, does the big large square bales. That's what the big nice Heston 4x4 is that Mock Farms has available on Shapeways and I think Mats and Miniatures has them actually for sale. So um, we've got a Heston 4910. Yep. And a, is that the farm logo on the back end? That's there? the farm logo on it. Yeah, it's the Red Dirt cool. Dairy logo. I've got that posed on several different pieces of the equipment around here and such. And then a hook to a gorgeous 4955 that Lee Johnson did for me. Uh, and then we got some of the tillage here. Uh, is this a DMI plow? DMI plow, yeah, that uh, Kerry G or the dogs also. Uh, you're going to hear his name a fair amount. He did some awesome pieces again for me, as he always has in the past. I've noticed, like, on Mike Less' uh, YouTube, uh, you know, he's filmed some big versatiles out in Oklahoma plowing. They kind of plow in a circle, I think, or go around the field in a loop. Yeah. Um, and this farm, like I said, obviously, because of the different types of tillage, they've got all from some nice river bottom that you do the traditional more type tillage to actually then they've got the they got some good dry land where they're doing fallow type work with a uh, with a big blade plow so let's talk about this blade plow I mean that's pretty impressive yeah, what brand is that that's a sunflower um, Jeremy Kinsman did that for me it's actually a full uh, nine shank or nine blade 56 or 54 feet across I can't remember this morning but it's a monster um, and with my fat fingers, unfortunately, I have to apologize, Jeremy. It did have the the uh, picker wheels all the way across, and I've already uh, busted one off. And I found that this morning, and you have to fix that for me. He told me that repairs cost extra, so we'll work on figuring that out. Need a full-time mechanic. Need on a full-time mechanic. Left, pull her in the shop. So we got a pretty cool tractor up front too. Yeah, it took to an uh, Agco Star. Um, 425 horse that Aaron Jensen did for me. As you all know, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a massy nut, and when there's a, a red one out there, I have the 116th one that Toy Tractor Times did, so I've always wanted a gorgeous 164th, and Aaron finished that up and brought it to me at the show. It's a beautiful piece. Great. Um, and uh, looks like we've got a New Holland over here. And yeah, the, that's the farm's, it's one of their planting tractors, as well as they use it for some light tillage and stuff. That was done by Dan Severson. Um, it's one of the, I've always had a thing as well for the baby Steigers and I asked him to build me a baby Steiger and as a kind of a mean joke but I love it even more now he instead of doing me the 335 that I wanted he actually knocked out one of the New Holland ones for me it's real T9020 T9020 it's got the it's the typical Severson project it's got the hood that opens and um, you know three points goes up and down and it's been hooked this weekend to a uh, five shank DMI that Kerry G also built for me Boy, that's really cool, especially you got the tiger claw on there. Yep. Well, let's um, take a look at some more of the equipment as we move around the display. So before we look at the McDonald's, let's just catch these trailers back here. Uh, what do we have here? We have a, the first the little one is one of the top shelf replica ones, straight out of the package. I just dusted it up, put the farm logos on it. It's a gorgeous little piece, guys. If you're starting out, you know, they're about $7, and you have a beautiful trailer. Open sides, you can put cows and horses in it. Um, and then next to it is one of Circle C Customs' beautiful 3D printed uh, slat side trailers. I did it up as a Sooner, but they can be commonly done up as a Wilson or a Featherlight as well. Um, Very nice. And um, we'll spring up here and look at the inside of this last building. And then uh, the primary mowers, it looks like, for the farm are uh, McDonald's. Yeah, a pair of McDonald's. That one still got the hay head on it, the other one just finished running canola, and so it's got the canola roller on it. Um, oops, I bumped it off, but Clayton up in Canada did that. Canola is a 
as a lot of people have asked me why I have a lot of Canadian type products on here, but there's parts of uh, Oklahoma that remind you a lot of the dry land of Canada, and so the same products grow there. I understand the canola in Oklahoma is raised mostly for biofuel. Uh, great representation of the state and all the equipment that are used on the farms there. As we work our way around the farmstead here, we've got the old shop and it uh, looks like a chemical tender truck. Yeah, that's the GMC with the chemicals and the water tanks on it and the water filling station off the farm. Is that a Brigadier? Yeah, that's it. That's cool. Yeah, you know, old GMC. I hear rumors that it's getting ready to replace with one of the new green light work stars here sometime soon, so there's less black smoke coming out of it like this. Um, it opens up, like I said, it's connected up to where that used to be the old shop that the farm stores all their extra seed and chemicals in and then the parts for, they do play around with restoring tractors a little bit. There's another 3020 in the shop that's all tore apart. See down on top of the engine, the spare parts including the John Deere decals are sitting in a box. Uh, yeah, let's see that box, where's that? Right oh, there. I see him. Yeah. It's, uh, Dan there, Meyer there. at the Model Farmer uh, did that box, did those, has those nice John Deere boxes that you can find on Facebook and such. And you know, it's just hard to imagine this is 164 scale or any scale. And that's a lot of, a lot of detail. Yeah, it looks like is that an oil heater up there on the? Oh yeah, you know? she's, yeah. This shop, this shop's heated. This one's not air conditioned. So this is why it's not primary shop anymore. And out on the ground, somebody, a couple people have caught it. Is where they got the overspray from the last. They don't have a paint booth. So the last time that they spray painted one up, it was just done out in the parking lot. Uh, Very cool. I can remember that from a kid when a good friend that we lost a couple years ago. Of, Chuck Burkholder, he did a, was big in the toy world, but also did a lot of real tractor restoration. And it was always that way in front of his shop. That's the way he uh, painted them up. So, but. Well, let's um, take a look over at this other building, which I think is really cool, because you just see a lot of these kind of A-frame buildings from the 70s on farms all across the country. And uh, we'll get inside there, but it's got all that foam insulation sprayed in there on the walls. And uh, yeah. definitely looking forward to learning more about this. Um, Tony Dixon built this one for me. He did a great job on it. Um, it's got the full man cave in it and got the metal working side of the shop down it wraps around into the like I said the regular tool bench side of it. All the reels on it actually the air hose reels the hoses do pull in and out. Those who found those on Shapeways. Um, Shapeways is just a great place guys for you to find all kinds of goofy little details. Look at all that the wrenches. Yeah. So everything. Chris Delva stuff and you know Aaron Jensen's got a lot of pieces in here that are just like Is that a 110 lawnmower? Yeah, or a, I think it's a 140. 140, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I don't know my dear lawnmowers. But look that at well. that. I mean, it's not just enough anymore to have tool benches in there. They better be open and showing wrenches. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. You know, and, and then uh, right down to, you know, one of um, one of uh, Farm Factor 3D's four wheelers. I wasn't happy enough with it just being stocked the way it is, so I did one up as a fencing and cattle four wheeler with the toolbox and the T-post driver and extra T-post strapped onto the side. And then I got a second one that's set up for firefighting with the weed burner and uh, an extra Indian can on it. Um, and uh, over here, I guess we can see the man cave part of it that yeah, you're talking got about. Yeah, got kegerator and a double door refrigerator and the gun cabinet and um, a couple I think extra. people in Oklahoma like to have a good time. They do. I, I, people have asked me why on my display journals and stuff I party so much and I tell them I think it's because if you live with fear of a tornado every uh, three days, you tend to uh, have some fun when you can. Sure. So this is a farm's got a pretty big chopper here. Yeah, Dan Hansen did that up for me. I have to apologize. I don't know my model numbers, but as you guys know, I don't really know my John Deere's. But I told him I wanted a beautiful chopper and just kind of to be mean to me. He, uh, instead of something oddball, he did a John Deere to put on the display. But since, I guess it fits since this farm's got some nice older John Deere's. Yeah, it's a model 7500. We just got it there before it fuzzed out, but uh, model 7500. And uh, it's got the mud guards on the back, and then it looks like he's also added the detail of uh, bumpers in case the chopper's got to get pushed in mud. Got tires mounted over the weight bracket in the back, and a uh, very nice machine. And uh, you got the Kemper head out here too. Got the Kemper head and some of the other detail looks on like this it side. Folds up. And yep, it does. That's the one from Mock Farms, one of their kits as well. I got to meet him this weekend, and he advised me that I. We did a great job putting that together, but we forgot to order the deflectors for it. Safety first. Safety first. Another part of, my, of course, my traditional Oklahoma displays is the old trucks, but also got to have the tornado shelter. 
Um, the new house probably ha has one in the garage that you can't see from this angle from the way I lay out the display, but the shop has one just off the shop in the concrete floor. So we got one more tractor up here by the shed. Yeah, I got a uh, 4840. Uh, it's got I I detailed that one up, weathered her up kind of rough because it's always hooked to the newer spreader. It's got a flat tire right now. That's why she's drawn up to the shop. Um, and uh, got the uh, sun visor guards on it, which yep. were real popular in the south. Yeah, yep. it's got an extended fuel tank from Matson Miniatures, and it's the uh, motor's been carved out. And I put one of Zeb Mueller's nice uh, high detailed motors inside of it too. And we got the uh, Coon Knight V tank spreader there. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been used with a little bit of debris still in it. So we got the spreader, and also up here we've got some uh, semi trucks. Got farms two semis are parked. Got a Mac and one of the new. Uh, the Mac with a uh, scratch built trailer on it by Tony Dixon, and the uh, the second is one of the new uh, Western Stars uh, from top or from sorry from uh, DCP. Um, they did a real nice job on that. I wanted something just a little different. Haven't seen anybody use one on a display yet. I figure that's the boss's rig since I understand they're really nice to drive. They're a little oh, it's cool colors too with them. Yep. Then it got barbecue pit, picnic tables. Uh, it's, like I said, it's one of my displays. Yeah. I mean, if it ain't, we ain't partying, it didn't happen. So, so what's uh, this over here? That's the farm. So after the farm, in Oklahoma commonly after tornadoes and such do come through, they re-put all the power underground. Okay. So this is the full power station for the farm. They have their own dedicated transformer, and they also have their own cat standby generator uh, when they, if they do win and if they do lose power. Again. Uh, it goes, cool. this would be a full vault. That's what the man, the uh, mantles for all the wiring's done underground, and then spider webs out across the farm. Chris, the things that you think of in these displays. <laughs> that well, shows why of you're course, you spin all the back trophies. around, and you know, there's two things on here. As a shout out to my uh, loving wife, who likes it, supports me in this crazy hobby, and lets me hang out with people like Jason and John Schomburg. You know, I got to have my phone box, and I got a cell tower up on top of the uh, silo. Yep, we'll take a look at that. And, I mean, you got the culverts under the driveway. And uh, I guess we'll move over here and take a look at the house because that's pretty elaborate too. Yeah, the house is, uh, like I said, it, it started life as a simple little kit that I was going to use on another farm. And as Tony Dixon was putting it together for me, he uh, determined that it was way too nice of a building for the farm I wanted to use it on and decided to put some additions on it. Um, work I did on it was build a matching little lean-to to park some of the extra trucks and cars and such in and the full patio out back with the hot tub. And got to have a hot tub on the farm, tub. why not? <laughs> And uh, inside the detail, the garage is detailed up is uh, Corvettes and Harley Davidsons, right down to having a Corvette logo in the floor. Um, Let's see if we can swing it around here. And got the recycling boxes and such. I mean, the, the stuff we can get 3D now, I mean, it's just amazing. We have, you know, cases of Coca Cola with actual bottles in it. Um, the Harleys and the Corvettes are, like I said, another shout out to my good friend JW and his wife. She collects Corvettes and he collects Harley Davidsons. Um, cool he'll stuff. see that he'll see this video and say that you know their house doesn't look like that, and I always remind them that this is what I wish their house looked like. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, and I mean, you even got the mailbox down here by the yeah. road. one giant, one for the farm and one for the uh, house, and painting them up John Deere colors, but opposite. JW will love that when he watches this video. <laughs> so we move over here, and we got a kind of a bridge coming into the farm where we saw the tanker. Yeah. And uh, now I guess we'll start talking about the um, dairy production the dairy side, production of, side yep. of it. So you had mentioned earlier that this is a 80 cow dairy and uh, we've got two harvester silos and uh, the cattle uh, in different sections out here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the smaller harvester and kind of notice they're uh, not the traditional kind of navy blue of a harvester. No, I uh, thought if the farm has had them for as many years as they did that maybe they went and repainted them to match the rest of the farm and the whole farm's theme is green and white so I figured that when the crew came out to repaint it they asked them well can we do it in green and then uh, they actually got a hold of some of the older style decals to make it look like it was the Spirit of 76 harvesters with the American flags on it. Um, very cool. Now, what do you store in the small one? The I mean, small one would ha it has high moisture corn in it for feeding okay. right to the dairy cat. And then we've um, got the, the larger one over the there. The large now. one, I was told by JW, could have a blend of everything from corn, milo, alfalfa. They just kind of, whatever they got, they blow it in and feed it. In. Okay. And uh, what's the building that the small harvesters... Uh... Um, this is the actual dairy parlor with the... Uh, it's uh, got a roof. Hay would be stored up here. I had some bales on it for the show, but I got tired of pulling them off. 
Um, it's a stanchion style parlor with the tractor fab uh, locking mm. stanchions in it. Opens fully up. It's got the full milk house. Um, one of the people have asked me why I've got the milk crates and why I have the jugs on the dairy farm itself. And actually, I have a friend who is in dairy and a, he's making 80% of his profit right now off 20% of his milk. It is all going to the new farm to table movement. Um, they actually come out and they want their milk direct and then they pasteurize it and such and make cheese out of it. And that's what I thought, you know, this farm, if they're just running the 80 cows, as close as I've got it laid to the town of Stillwater, but there is a big one of those, the, the food movement that away there, that, that's probably how the farm has some fun with it. Um, that's really cool. And uh, I guess we, these must be the then cows we, getting ready to go in to be milked? Well, or, this would be the calving pen. Calving this would be pen, the late okay. calves. Um, one little detail on it that, you know, we've got the buckets with the, those of you who've been on the dairy or worked around show steers, it's, you uh, commonly see a bucket that you'll actually have a nipple on, and that's what you, you know, keep them trained and such. That's where you uh, nurse them out and sit down and hold just a bottle. You can hang a bucket on the fence. One of the things, this has Sean Lockwood's at Lockwood Angus. It's got his waterers. Um, the full cattle pin operation is his as well, and so are his little feeders. They're a great project, easy to do. Um, it's a great starting point for a lot of you out there who is uh, wanting to give it a try. Yeah, so I mean, we can see all the yep. cows out here. And, uh, this would be what's called a quarantine pen. It comes off, so this would be the vet barn. Okay. It's got both a calving pen in it, done by Justin Miller. He built that out of brass. It's gorgeous. All the gates work the way they're supposed to. You can even tap the gate so you can get in um, and let the calf, after you pulled it out, nurse. I mean, beautiful job on that. Um, from that, it goes into, like I said, uh, Lockwood Angus's um, shoot system. They're made out of styrene. Regular super glue holds them together. They've got a Y gate system in it, so you can either run them up to the squeeze chute or that you can run them up into the loading chute to load them out into a semi. It does lead down into a uh, uh, scratch cast uh, tub that the gate rotates around on. Uh, from there, we come over to the, the second, the primary feeding source, the primary, you know. Uh, so, and also, I noticed it must be a tornado siren up there in the cell phone tower. Correct, yeah. yeah. You often see in Oklahoma that even if the farm's not a dairy anymore, that the uh, county EOC department or emergency operations command has uh, asked you if you can put one of your a tornado siren on there because in Oklahoma, some of the older silos tend out to be the rural areas, some of the highest points. Sure. And it's a good source of, you know, so. They don't make any revenue, uh, the farm doesn't make any revenue, but it's just a good community service to have that. Um, well, and then we've got the, the feeding side of it, so it looks like they must have a feed belt that comes out here. And yeah, it's a them. Henson auger type system that comes out of the little barn, like I said, and it's got, the, it's got a lift so that they can supplement with any feed they want to use off the TMR mixer. Um, what's that pulled by? That's a 4520 on there that I did uh, and weathered her up rough. It was probably, at one time it was one of the farm's primary uh, tillage tractors. It's been restored but she a few years ago, but she still sees some use. Um, well, that, that's uh, very impressive. And uh, I guess now we can kind of move to the back side of the farm here and talk about a little bit more of the equipment that's back here. So we've got some more John Deere tractors uh, back here on the farm. Uh, what model is this here with the, the hay spray 60, on it? 6603. Boy, that's neat. Lee Johnson did me that. He also did the 90, the uh, 2940 that's sitting behind it with the loader. Um, and he also did a, I'll pull it out of the shed for you to see it with the Oklahoma type canopy on it. Did a nice little 2510 at the farm he uses for just little chore loader tractors. Let's take a look at this other loader tractor too, because that's pretty cool. You might think it's just a 4020 sitting there with that um, cab on it. Yeah, I know that's one of my favorite. I sent Lee a picture of the literature down the, the front cover of the uh, Henniker literature from that age. It's got a 9420, or a 2940 correction. And uh, I really just thought it was a neat looking um, tractor. And I thought, you know, why not? I hadn't seen anybody do one and wanted one with a loader. Very cool. Now we got some big tractor power. Uh, looks like hiding back here as well. And, uh, yeah, the, I'll let you maybe pull that out for us. The farm's packing tractor. Lee did that as well. Um, is a uh, 8850 with a plow. And then I apologize. I don't know the name of the actual silage packer, but they commonly use they use concrete blocks and such just to yeah, roll behind it. Big heavy roller. Yep. That's uh, definitely a nice detail. 
another yeah, a lot of the pickups I did down here, but another very unique piece that Tony Dixon did for me. It's the first one I've ever done. Is uh, Chevy and GMC actually for a while had a true 3500 comparable to the Ford F450 or made to compete with, and it had the lower chunk of the grill. Um, it was like I said, actually a ton and a half pickup, and I love the way that one turned out. It was That's just a cool, gorgeous little, you know. I had it a couple days this weekend, loaded up with six round bells on it, and it made for a really nice shot. Well, let's uh, move over to the other shed that that's on fire that still has some equipment, and we'll talk about what's parked around it and inside it. So we've got another John Deere in there. That's a pretty sweet looking tractor with uh, diamond turf tires up front and yeah, it's a tires in the back. 5020 Wheatland. It's the second one that the farm has owned. Uh, they had another one, and it got uh, sold to some farm from uh, from upstate New York so I had so they had to find themselves another one um, that, that's pretty good that farm in uh, Western New York's definitely enjoying it <laughs> well, let's uh, swing back here and uh, take a look at some of the equipment yeah I've uh, got the, a big challenger tractor yeah one of the farm's newer uh, row crop tractors is a challenger they're uh, trying that one out it's hooked to the uh, Landau drill Adam I did the tractor Adam Ferrick did the uh, drill that's a beautiful piece one of the, my favorite pieces I have um, behind it's a pair of a Massey and a Heston uh, baler square baler farm square baler built by Randy Glick um, and then a John Schomburg uh, uh, Bobcat skid steer sitting next to it. Over here on the silo that fills a silo. It's a Miller Pro um, it's Terre Haute Customs design I actually ordered it off of Shapeways and detailed it out myself beautiful piece Easy to do. You just get yourself a little chunk of a wood screw for the auger in it. Um, paint it up. They can be painted up as Badger. I've seen them painted up as Case IH. And make a Victor out of it, or a, yeah, lots of options. Yeah, that's for the Dairyman in you, which you all know I'm not. Um, that is a neat piece. I wanted to thank both Dan Hansen and uh, Zeb Mueller for, and Doug Simon as well for answering all my silly questions about dairy. It. Uh, not something I know a lot about, something I know a lot more though about now. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing it with us. So tell us about the cows. Yeah, another interesting thing on here that I wanted to do a little different is Mats and Miniatures has asked me to uh, paint up a bunch of brown Swiss cows, so I thought I'd show that off for them and such. It, something different I hadn't seen on display. You see a lot of Holsteins and a few Guernseys, but I wanted to show off some of the brown Swiss. Um, I understand they're a higher butterfat cow anyway, so it make more sense that if they're selling it more for organic and for uh, uh, cheese and butter production, this is what the farm would have. Chris, thank you for the thorough tour of this great display. I mean, there's so much more than just what you see here, and uh, the attention to detail you have is impressive, and it definitely shows why you're honored to have a gold trophy again this time. Yeah, thank you, and I really want to give a thank out to all the fans that I've gained from this. I've met so many kids that have watched all my YouTube videos on Toy Tractor Times YouTube. Um, keep watching them, guys. Keep supporting Jay, and let's keep this hobby moving forward. Thanks a lot, Chris. Look forward to see what you dream up next. And as always, every week on ToyTractorTimes.com, Chris is there with Model Farm Monday. Monday. <laughs> have a good one. Thanks a lot.